Studio chief Daryl Zanuck, an early fan of the screenplay, was eager to release the film even though Christmas was over half a year away. They chose to bring it out in the summer because more people go to the theaters in the summer and they felt that they would have a bigger commercial success. But Fox was afraid to promote a Christmas-themed movie in the summer, so the studio decided to conceal its Yuletide theme from the public. They didn't want to have it labeled a Christmas movie. In fact, they did everything possible to kind of hide that fact. And the Gwen character was in the ads, kind of in the shadows in the background. This is the man who made the miracle on 34th Street, but you had no idea what, what this was all about. Stop it, turn it off. That won't work, it's no good. But what do you make a trailer for? To give the public an idea of what kind of a picture to expect. But more sweet. Hilarious, romantic, tender, exciting. Make up your minds, it can't be all of those things. The studio came up with a wildly unconventional trailer. It tackled the publicity problems head on without showing a single scene from the film. You've got to decide what kind of a picture this is. Is it a romantic love story? Is it an exciting thriller? Is it a hilarious comedy? Make up your minds. Now go to work and fix it up. Hey, Rex. How are you? Ed, how are you? Good to see you. How's the ghost of Mrs. Muir? It's pretty good, I think. How's New York? Fine. Say, Rex, have you seen Miracle on 34th Street? Yes, saw the preview. I never heard laughs like it in the theater before. Oh, is that right? Now, don't miss it. I was crazy about it. You really think we've got something, huh? I don't know whether the women will like it, but it's a great man's picture. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Ann Baxter, Hello, good to see Ed. you. How are you? I haven't seen you since the Academy Awards. Congratulations on winning that Oscar. Thanks, Ed, very much. Oh, uh, say, Ann. Yeah? Have you seen Miracle on 34th Street? Have I? Ed, it's wonderful. Yeah, I understand it's a pretty good comedy. Comedy? Well, I suppose that's true. I had a million laughs, but the thing that got me were, were the tears in between. It's so tender and charming and warm. I don't know how the men are going to like it. It's a great woman's picture. Is that so? Oh, there's one scene between John Payne and Maureen O'Hara. Well, he's trying to prove... No, I'm not going to spoil it for you. You go and see it. Okay, we're ready. In May of 1947, Miracle on 34th Street was put to the test with its first audience preview. Anxious Fox executives were about to find out if their plan to release a Christmas movie amid the high temperature heat of summer would somehow succeed or result in box office disaster. Fox had no expectation that it was going to be this, you know, just really sort of part of cinematic history. And then once it was previewed, it had this spectacular reaction. People were applauding at the end of it. I couldn't believe it, you know. They were just like actually clapping and they realize, oh my God, they had now had a hit on their hands. That summer, Miracle on 34th Street lived up to its title. The film received a blizzard of rave reviews and set cash registers ringing nationwide. At a time when most movies played for one or two weeks, Miracle ran for over half a year, all the way to Christmas. In 1948, the sleeper hit received four Academy Award nominations, including Best Picture, and that March, it took home an impressive three Oscars. Best Original Story for Valentine Davies, Best Screenplay for George Seaton, and Best Supporting Actor for Edmund Gwen. Edmund Gwen of the Miracle on 34th Street. <laughs> now I know there's a Santa Claus. 